Hi, everyone. So today we'll be looking at chapter 82.6, Defining Seasonality for a State of No Snow. So I'll be presenting what the authors wrote in the book. And if you want more information, all of it can be found in this link uh, in the slides. So for the outline, we're going to be looking at the chapter overview, the theory, and then we'll get into the practice in the next videos. And if you want to access the chapter in the book, this is the link. Again, the full book is at this link. So in this chapter, the main goal is to demonstrate how to produce annual maps that will represent the first day within a year on which a pixel reaches 0% snow cover. And then we'll also look at summarizing and visualizing results over time and space. So what you can expect to learn in this chapter is how to generate and use a date band in image compositing, um, applying temporal filtering to an image collection, and identifying patterns of seasonal snow maps. This, however, is assuming that you know the basic materials from chapter one to four. So if you think that you might be a bit in need of a refresher, then I, I suggest you go to these chapters in particular um, to learn how to import image is in image collections, filtering them, visualizing them. Um, and this can be as simple as visualization parameters because I'm not gonna go into much detail about that how to perform basic image analysis, like selecting bands, computing indices, creating masks, um, how to work with time series and data in Earth Engine, and then fitting linear and nonlinear functions with regression in an image collection time series. So this is super useful as a refresher, because I'm not going to go into details. So just before you go into this video, make sure you're aware of these things. So let's jump into the theory really quickly, just to explain why we're doing this. Um, so let me get my camera off so you can see the full thing. So the impacts of seasonal snowmelt timing and the importance of tracking. Why are we looking at this in this chapter? Um, and so we'll be tracking seasonal and initial annual variability in the timing of snowmelt, but why? So timing annual seasonal snowmelt and assessing any potential change in that timing is going to have broad ecological implications. It's going to impact human livelihoods, especially in and around high latitudes and mountainous systems. So this all has to do with the hydrologic cycle within those regions. Um, the annual melting of winter snowfall accumulation is going to provide the main source of water for stream flow and groundwater recharge for approximately one sixth of the global population. And so if you look at it by region, the timing of snowmelt in the Arctic and Antarctic will influence the length of the growing season. And having consistent snow cover throughout the winter will insulate vegetation from harsh temperatures and wind. So in the mountainous regions like the Himalayas, snowmelt is a major source of freshwater downstream, and it's essential in recharging the groundwater. So if you want more information about that as well, because I'm not going into a lot of detail, the book has more information and online you can you can look at you know how snow melt and snow in general, snow cover will impact specific regions. Um, because the main thing is it's a source of water. And so this form of seasonal water resource is one of the fastest changing hydrologic systems under global warming, which makes sense because snow requires cold. Um, and warming is only worsening as time goes. And so as, as Earth's climate continues to warm, those changes are going to impact regional economies and ecosystem functioning and increase the potential for flood hazards as well in certain regions. And according to one analysis on the Yamal Peninsula in the northwestern Siberian tundra, researchers had found that the timing of snowmelt was an important predictor of differences in ecosystem functioning across the landscape. So, hence the the importance of of learning how to to measure um, snow melt timing and tracking it. And warmer temperatures are anticipated, as I mentioned. Climate change is um, an important issue that continues to worsen um, in terms of of consequences and impacts. And this type of factor like global warming is going to alter the type and onset of precipitation. And so a lot of regions like the Rocky Mountains, for example, in North America, have already measured a reduction in snowpack volume and warmer temperatures have shifted that precipitation from snow to rain, which then just causes snow melt to occur earlier. So with this in mind, kind of a background, um, we're going to start jumping into the 
practice and see how we can measure and track and look at it and visualize it in different ways. So you can add the book's code from the code editor directly. There's a repository um, where you can have access to all the different codes and checkpoints because we're going to be working with the A26, A and B checkpoints. And we're just going to copy paste into a new script and I'll show you that in the practice. So I really invite you to create a new page, new script so that we can work with it. Um, so let's get into the practice. So we're going to start with section one, uh, identifying the first day of 0% snow cover. So this goal of the section is really to set out the variables, set up the functions, find our data. And then section two is really going to be about how do we visualize what we have? So although we're not printing any information, the main thing that you're creating is the median snow cover and the analysis mask, which is globally, because here we're trying to focus on really terrestrial land snow cover, um, which should be excluding glaciers or water and just allows us to focus our attention on, on land and snow cover. So this is what you would be printing technically, but it's not necessary. Um, I just thought I would show you. So. We're going to start with code checkpoint 2826A. And so I'm just going to show you how you can do it. Um, basically, as I mentioned, you have the repository. If you go on A2.6, we're going to start with A26A checkpoint. And what you can do is use the code that appears to copy and paste into your new script. So I have a new script here. And we're basically just going to start with this section um, until we go to the next checkpoint. So just starting here, um, I'll just talk a bit about what we'll be doing, but in section 1.1, we'll be defining the date range that we need. 1.2, we'll be defining the date bands, then we'll define our masks, and then we'll identify the first day of the year. The snow cover is defined by the modus normalized difference snow index and DSI. So this is what we're gonna be working with snow cover, but I'll show you that. Um, in terms of, of what it looks like and what we'll be looking at. Um, and let's start with section one. So section one, very short, basically just setting our dates. So we're specifying the day of the year on which to start the search for the first day with 0% snow cover. And for applications in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll likely want to start with January 1st. But if, for example, you're studying snowmelt in the Southern Hemisphere, like the Andes, uh, where snowmelt can occur on dates before or after January 1st, it can be more appropriate to start on July 1st, which is going to be DOI 183. That is also in the book. So when looking at this, um, years define as the 365 days beginning from the start DOI. So then we define the years to start and end tracking snow cover fraction. And all the years found within this range are going to be included in our analysis. So then we're going on to section 1.2, which is defining the date bands. So here we have the start date, start year. This is just going to be your variables for storage um, for the function below. And here we're basically defining a function to add several date bands to the images. And then the added bands will be used in a future step. So each image, when you look at it, has a metadata timestamp. Modus, for example, it's 2000, if I recall correctly. And because we'll be creating annual image mosaics that, is made, that are made up of pixels from many different images, then the date needs to be encoded per pixel as a value in an image band so that it's retained in the final mosaics. So the, if we're looking at this um, function, we have the date. Um, we got the calendar day of year, which is the enumerated day of the year from January 1st. And then we've got the relative DOI, which I'll, I'll talk about in a sec. The milliseconds here from the Unix epoch. And then we have the year here. And this is tied to the start DOI that we had created here. That's fine, the day of the year. So here we have January 1st. But let's say you have DOI that's 183. The, the analysis is going to cross to the next calendar year because we're talking about July 1st. However, the year is going to be given to all pixels will be the earlier year, even if an image, for example, is collected on or after January 1st of the subsequent year. So it's just important to note that. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we have our two global variables here that are initialized, and these are going to be redefined iteratively in, uh, in the next step. 
So just to talk about Caldor and Reldor before we move on to section 1.3 with the masks, um, basically Caldor is the calendar day of year. So this is really based on, it's going to count based on calendar year. So January 1st, day one or day zero. But with relative doi, let's say you're starting on July, then July 1st is going to be your relative day zero and then so on. So this is why we include it and it's enumerating from a user defined start doi. Now onto the analysis masks, we're going to have a water mask and then we're going to have a complete um, collection mask, which is basically the, the snow cover. And so the importance of a mask is for many reasons. So the mask can be used to constrain the analyses to certain latitudes, line cover types, geometries. There's many reasons why we can use a mask. In this case, we're going to mask out water. So as I mentioned earlier, the analysis is confined to pixels over landforms only. And then we're going to mask out pixels that have very few days of snow cover. And then we'll mask out pixels that are snow covered for a good deal of the year, glaciers. So to do all of this, we're going to import the Modus Land Water Mask data set. And then we're going to select the Water Mask band and then set all land pixels to value one because those are the values that, those are the pixels that matter. Zero are the ones that are going to be excluded, like a black and white, as I showed earlier. So if we go here, for example, let's just look at the data sets. So global water mask, you can see it's a mask data set. Um, you see the timestamp, 2000 bands. This is what we're looking at. So this is why we're calling water mask. And then we're gonna look at this one. Again, you can see snow cover daily global. 2000s. What is our band NDSI snow cover? As you can see. So that is why we are calling these here. So once we've called those bands, the next step is to create our, our other criteria masks um, because we want to mask pixels based on the frequency of snow cover just to have those masks of very few days of snow cover and snow cover for a good deal of so here we have two types, the minimum snow cover duration and the maximum snow cover duration. So the first condition is checking that a pixel has to be at least 10% snow covered for at least 14 days, um, two weeks during the year. And this ensures that only pixels with significant and sustained snow cover are going to be considered. Then you have the maximum snow cover duration. Uh, this is checking that a pixel has to be not must not be snow covered for more than 124 days in total during the year because this helps to filter out areas that might be snow covered for an unusually long duration and that might be kind of atypical for the region or it could mean persistent snow cover um, instead of seasonal changes so that's why we're filtering by 124 days okay so then once we keep going let's look at it here um, here, we're just going to combine the water mask and snow cover frequency masks. And now we have another function. So this is going to be our section 1.4, which is identifying the first day of the year without snow per pixel per year. So here we're making a list of the years to process. Um, we had already created our variables at the end section one. If you remember, we're looking at the range between 2000 and 2019. So we just have variable happening here and then we're going to map the following function over the list of years for each year we're going to try to identify the first day with zero percent snow cover in the checkpoint itself there are different comments explaining all the code so if i'm going too fast or not putting enough detail you can just go in the checkpoint and you'll be able to to find out what's going on but basically we're just creating this function using all the masks and the, the variables we have created to map out um and just create our, our list of items that will then be able to convert to an image collection and start visualizing in section two so remember you have these masks created and this is really to ensure that we're working with data sets that are focused on terrestrial that are not focused on section on areas that might be a bit atypical um so we're really trying to minimize the variable factors in finding out um, this 0% snow cover pixel. 
or the first day of 0% snow cover. So if we look at the code here, um, we're going to define the, the start and end dates to filter the data set for the given year. And then we're going to filter the image collection by the date range and add the date bands to each image in the filter collection. The start date, end date. And then we're going to make a mosaic using the, the minimum reducer to select the pixel with zero minimum snow covers right here. And because the collection is sorted by date, the first image with zero snow is selected. And this operation is conducted per pixel to build the complete image mosaic. And then you can apply the mask to the resulting mosaic. And then from this, an, uh, an EE list of images is returned. So if you forget this here, this is producing an EE list of images. If you know from other chapters, that just means we're obtaining results of a list of images, but not a single image. So the last step is just going to be to convert an, the EE into an image collection. And this is important to make because in Earth Engine, there's a lot of functions and most functions and operations are designed to work with image collections specifically, not an EE list. So basically an EE list is just going to be a basic data structure that will hold a list of items like images, but it's not specialized as an image collection. It's just a basic list. So here you have the annual call, it's your annual collection, and you're just converting your annual list here that you created, where you're looking at each pixel individually, collecting the 0% snow cover. And these are just the ways to visualize the masks. Um, so the median snow cover and the analysis mask is just to show um, what you had been creating here in the masks. But otherwise, there's not much that you can visualize yet, and that's what we're going to look in section two. So. That'll be in the next video.